Hey folks, it's Chris, welcome back. So, a few nights ago I went outside to image the planets Jupiter and Saturn. I can do that using my planetary webcam, a ZWO ASI 120MCS color camera. But I thought about some friends of mine. They own a small telescope, but they hesitate to invest into expensive equipment without even knowing whether planetary imaging is their thing. But lucky us, every one of us already invested into a very good and capable camera system, our smartphone. So let's see what this device can achieve. I already did a video about planetary imaging, so check this out before watching this video. But long story short, planetary imaging is all about taking a fast series of relatively bright objects and with fast I mean being faster than the turbulence of the air, and then choosing only those images out of that stack that reveal the sharpest parts of that planet. My equipment for the night? My smartphone is a common Google Pixel 5 smartphone with a relatively old camera sensor, but a fascinating software behind. But this all should work with nearly every mid-price smartphone available. And then I also use this Salastron smartphone adapter. It's relatively cheap, I mean, compared to other Astra equipment, and it's rigid and it works just fine. So I tried three different things to compare the capabilities of the smartphone against the dedicated Astro gear. Okay, first thing, I used this mid-price binoculars and attached my smartphone onto it using the Celestron adapter. This means no tracking, no fine focus and probably high chromatic aberrations. Adapter onto here, this screw locked and slightly smartphone inside, perfect. Now use this screws to align the lens with the eyepiece and voila, you're good to go. And then using some tripod and point my binoculars towards Jupiter and here you go. This is a live view through my binoculars using nothing but my Google Pixel 5 smartphone. I mean, it's totally overexposed, but this way you can see the moons of Jupiter. Cool, huh? The drift of Jupiter is due to Earth's rotation because the fixed tripod can't track the night sky. By the way, trick was to fix the focus on the smartphone and then focus with the binoculars and then setting down the exposure to view some details on the surface of Jupiter. I think it's fair to say that you can see the main belt and the great red dot right in the middle, but seriously, I mean, just let's run this video frame through Auto Stacker and sharpen it with Registax. These are both free to use and download software tools. And this is the result. I mean, yes, it is a bit overprocessed, but we can image the surface of Jupiter with our binoculars and the smartphone only. Compared to this, this is a simulation of Jupiter's surface at this time and date and clearly you can see the red spot is right where we imaged it. Okay, enough of Jupiter. So let's look over to Saturn. Saturn is much dimmer and much smaller. Still, here it is. This is the live feed of Saturn through my binoculars with my Google Pixel 5 smartphone. See the rings and the central planetary body? You can see the gaps between the rings and the planet on both sides. What a sight. This is what brought me into astrophotography in the first place. But come on, hey, let me sharpen that thing software-wise. And here's the result. Personally, I think that the live video feed is prettier, but it's definitely not Hubble. But I mean, hey, seeing the rings of Saturn with binoculars only and imaging that, it's a cool thing to do. Okay, and here you see me demonstrating that yes, obviously you can image the moon also using just the binoculars and my Google Pixel 5 smartphone, but I think that was obvious by now. Okay, so we imaged the rings of Saturn, we imaged the big red dot of Jupiter, but you know what, let's just move on from the binoculars to the telescope. Because the main question was, how does the smartphone in front of an eyepiece compare against a dedicated astro camera on prime focus? A side note, for further explanations about the different camera attachment methods and the theory behind you, I got you covered. So experiment number two, attach the smartphone to the eyepiece of my telescope using the same Celestron adapter as before. I used a 10mm eyepiece and a 3x Barlow lens and then clipped the smartphone with the adapter in front. And here you can see the big gas giant Jupiter through my telescope using my Google Pixel 5 smartphone. You can clearly see the bands of Jupiter, some colors, the main belt being more reddish. The red dot itself was sadly out of view, but nevertheless a stunning view. Then I used 2x digital zoom, but 
I think it just dropped it and I personally like the smaller version better. And here's the stacked image and sharpened. And look what we resolved. Fantastic. Way better than my first trials with the planetary webcam. Okay, so cool so far. And Saturn, so let's slew over to the pearl of the night sky. And right when I saw the raw video feed on the back of my smartphone, I was amazed. You could literally see the Cassini division. This is a large gap within Saturn's ring structure. And seeing the Cassini division is a good indicator of your seeing quality. So I was stunned so far. And here's the sharpened image. I mean, look at that. You can even see cloud bands on the surface of Saturn. What a sight. And all this only by using our smartphone. And here, I mean, why? While waiting for Jupiter to rise up in the night sky, I strolled across the night sky and fetched a single exposure of M2. M2 is a globular cluster and yes, I should have removed the three times Barlow lens, but hey, I was lazy. My smartphone has a night sky modus. That means that it captures light over several minutes and stack the individual subframes to one final result. I mean, look at that. You can see stars, you can see the general structure of the globular cluster, and you can even make out some star colors, even if the focus is slightly off, yes. But this proves deep sky photography is also doable with a simple smartphone in front of an eyepiece. And I think this is a pretty cool thing to consider as a beginner. Okay, third thing, replace the smartphone with a dedicated astro imaging camera. In my case, it's the ZWO ASI 120 MCS color camera and with around 175 bucks, it's a rather low priced or so entry level planetary astro imaging camera. Because sure thing, we want to compare the results of our smartphone with the dedicated astro gear and see whether it's worth the extra 200 bucks. So I imaged Saturn and here's the live feed from the ZWO camera and yes, sure thing, the overall quality is substantially better. See, here's the stacked image. You can also see the Cassini division and more than that you can spot cloud bands of different colors. And yes, the overall sharpness and the color is obviously one step ahead when using the ZWO camera. And let's not forget about Jupiter, so let's slew over and here it is. The live feed from the camera shows much more details on the surface and yes, we can extract more details and colors when stacking those sub-images to the final result. I mean, look at that. So it's not a pitch perfect image because the uh, imaging rig I use is not entirely dedicated to planetary imaging and the planets are way too low in the night sky where I live. And the ZWOSI 120MCS color is an entry-level planetary camera, but hey, I really like the results with all the colors and swirling details of the bands, and I'm happy with that. Okay, so let's wrap things up and compare the images of those two different setups. We had the same planets, same night, same seeing conditions. The only difference are the two different imaging devices. When comparing Saturn, the Pixel 5 against the ZWO, I think it's fair to say that the overall image quality of the ZWO clearly won. But as a beginner, you might be really happy with the Pixel 5 results. I mean, look at that. This is way better than many of my early results with the planetary webcam. And comparing the images of Jupiter, I think the ZWO wins easily. The amount of details is just another level. Color and sharpness, there's no doubt. But either way, you can see reddish bands on Jupiter's surface and some hints of swirls. It is, I mean, given the equipment we used, a decent image. I mean, overall, while playing the footage against each other, as a beginner, you might want to stick to your smartphone a little while longer. Because besides image quality, there are other aspects to consider. You don't need any laptop, USB cable, drivers, software, and so on and so forth. Just insert the phone, click focus and you're good to go. It can't be any easier. And if you find yourself hitting the level of you can't increase the quality of your data anymore, then there's still time to swap to a dedicated camera. And what is behind the ZWO ASI 120MCS color camera? First, there are cameras with a much higher frame rate. 
so you can capture more images in a shorter time frame and choose the best of them. And besides that, there is also the world of mono cameras you can dip your toes into. But remember, a expensive mono camera needs an expensive filter wheel, needs expensive filters, needs... I mean, it's a rabbit hole. But for now, clip your smartphone in front of your eyepiece and go and hunt some beautiful planets. And if you do so, please don't forget to tag me over on Twitter, I'd love to see some results. And while we are around this topic, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Especially the like button helps this episode to float on top the YouTube algos and um, reach some more newcomers, and that would be cool. And so as always I say, clear skies everyone, until next time here on Catching Photons.